This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time it is going to be on a cool Zephyr Zodiac combo that I've been messing around with. Now, this came to me as far as inspiration-wise from a person that I played against online about a week and a half ago uh, who was playing Zephyrs, and so what they did was they made a board of Naturia Beast, Dryden's, and Beatrice, and they searched any hand trap that they wanted to on a multitude of bases in terms of what they did with the play. Now they were very inefficient with how they structured the play and they end up using like two to three cards to do it every single time. So I started playing around with the concept in my head until I was able to shave it down efficiency wise until it became a one card combo, a true one card combo. You literally need no other cards in your hand to perform this combo. And that is one card Zodiac Barrage ending you with a Naturia Beast, a Dryden't, a Beatrice, a random Boxia just chilling. You search any hand trap or any monster in the game, preferably it's a hand trap usually if you're doing this going first. It's usually searching something like Max C, but you also end with Oracle of Zephra and full scales. So off of this one card, you end up with like eight cards. <laughs> and it's and it's just absolutely just really ridiculous as far as what it allows you to do uh, in theory. Now, I don't know if this is anything that's going to be like decent in like an actual Zephra deck now that like the like once Nationals rolls around, but it is at least something to like, consider. It's a cool combo. But anyway, it does require you to play four essentially really bricky cards. You have to play Scrap Goblin, you have to play Mary Mary, and you have to play Glow Bulb. You don't have to play Farfa, but I think you probably should because it makes your Beatrice into another defensive card on your opponent's turn by sending the far from from your deck to the grave and banishing a card. Uh, so it gives you Dryden and Beatrice to protect the Naturia Beast. Uh, but you can draw any of these cards except for Mare Mare as long as you have Zubarage and you can still perform the combo just by changing certain things. Like Mare Mare is the only card you can't draw. Uh, you can even draw the Globe Bulb because you'll be able to discard a card at the end of the combo sequence anyway. Uh, so it doesn't really matter too much. But anyway, I'm going to stop gassing and I'm just going to jump straight into this because it's a really unorthodox combo. Uh, but anyway, so you're going to activate your Zodiac Barrage, and you're going to use its effect to target itself and pop itself, and you're going to special summon the oh-so-familiar Zodiac Rat Peer from your deck. Now, the way we're going to make our XC stack for this rat is actually very unconventional. It's very, it's not very, like, uh, it's not very, like, what we're used to doing. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight into Broad Bull first and detach the Rat Peer from the Broad Bull to search Scrap Goblin. We're playing Scrap Goblin because it's a level 3 tuner that is searchable off Broad Bull because it is a Beast Warrior. Uh, that's the only reason you play this card and it's necessary for this combo to go forward. Now from here, what we're going to do is we want to preserve the second Rat in our deck for later in the combo string and that's why we didn't summon it out here. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this Chaka 9 that I just put on top of Broad Bull to detach Broad Bull and special summon this Rat Peer from Grave. And this Rat Peer can't be used as an overlay material for, a, for an XC summon, but you can normal summon the Scrap Goblin here, because we haven't normal summoned yet, and then synchro with this Rat Peer and this Scrap Goblin into Yazi, Evil of the Yang Zing. Now you have to do this specifically first, because then what we're going to do from here is we're going to continue to mold our Zoo XC stack, and we're going to put Tiger Mortar on top of the Chaka 9, detaching Chaka 9 to re-equip that rat as an Xyz material underneath the Tiger Mortar. So now we've re-established our access to the second rat here that is still laying in wait in our deck. And now from here, we're going to start just making the zoo stack finalized, and we're just going to put just any random zoo Xyz on top of the Tiger Mortar. Uh, in this case, it's Borbo, but it could be Hammer Kong or whatever. Uh, and then you put a Dryden on top. Now you want the Dryden here specifically to have three materials. You want it to have the rat and two Xyz's under it, because you want to be able to use an Xyz material to pop a card this turn, to detach a card to summon rat from deck, and then still have a material under it during your opponent's turn, so that you can then have a defensive line to protect your Nat Beast and your board in general. So we've got three materials under it, and from here, you're going to detach a card off Dryden, uh, as long as it's not the rat, it doesn't matter which one, and you're going to target the Yazi for destruction. Now if you were going second and your opponent had no opposition to your plays, like no traps, no hand traps, this gets a lot better because you could use Yazi to target itself, target an opponent's card, destroy them both, and then not have to waste the resources into going into Dryden. 
and using Dryden to pop it. But still, it's perfectly fine going first for this to happen, um, as far as like what it allows you to get advantage yield wise. Uh, and like going second, you probably aren't going to be doing this combo anyway because they're probably going to have literally everything uh, to try and stop you. But anyway, so you destroy your Yazi with your Dryden, and then your Yazi's effect triggers summoning any worm type monster from your deck. And the card you're going to summon is Mare Mare. Now, Mare Mare's effect is when it's on the field, it's a level 7 tuner, and up to three times a turn, you can lower its level by one to summon a level one worm token from uh, from just out of thin air and lower its level. So you can lower it down to level four as a tuner and then summon three tokens that are worm water type uh, tokens. So from here, you've got a level four tuner and you've got level one non-tuner tokens. So you're gonna synchro away with one of your Mare Mare tokens and the Mare Mare itself into your Dinglong first of the Yang Zing. Now from here, Dinglong is gonna get you a search and if you had no other scales in your hand, you're going to search for Zephyr Niu's Secret of the Yang Zing, specifically because it's a high scale. Now, if you had opened the Scrap Goblin, when you made your Broad Bull, you could have detached and searched a Beast Warrior scale to be a high scale or a low scale. Would have been pretty like, would have been pretty good for you as far as advantage wise. Uh, but in this situation as well, if you already have another scale in your hand, as long as it's a high scale, you do not have to search this card. You could search something like Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing, or like whatever other Yang Zing card you might be playing in your Zephyr deck. Uh, those are cards that you could access here. But all that matters is that at the end of your searching, off of making your like Broad Bull into your Dryant and your Denglong, you need to have a high scale in hand. And so. Not taking any other hypotheticals or situationals of like what the rest of your hand is into account for this one, assuming you have no other cards in hand and you're doing this, we're searching Zephyr Neo. That's what's so cool about this combo is it's a pure one card combo that can establish as much of what it needs as possible. It literally is all completely self-contained and self-fulfilling. You don't need any random specifics to happen like, oh, you need to have another scale or, oh, you need to have another level three as far as a tuner like to draw like a ghost ash or something no this this entire combo is self-sufficient but so like i said at the end of your exceed summoning and your dinglong summoning you want to have a high scale on hand and that is why here specifically we're searching zephyr neo secret of the yang zing but carrying on dinglong's effect can send a yang zing from deck to grave or a worm specifically from deck to grave to make its level the same as that monster so we're going to send another zephyr neo secret of the yang zing from deck to grave to make the dinglong a level six and so then we're going to synchro away with the Dinglong and the two Mare Mare tokens that were left over. And we're going to summon Boxia from our deck. And now from here, the Boxia, if you were going second, could spin up to two cards as well. Because you just used a Light Worm and two Water Worm tokens to summon it. So that's two separate attributes of Worm Monsters that you use to summon it. So going second... You've got a good bit of removal built into this combo if you wanted to go for it with the one card popped off Yazi and the two cards that could be spun off your Boxia, but that's not important here. Uh, the main thing is that the Denglong has been sent to Graveyard and its effect is going to trigger. And so the Denglong is going to special summon yet another Zephyr Neo from our deck. We've cycled through all three Zephyr Neos. Now you get to keep one in your deck, like I said, if you had a high scale in your hand prior to summoning the Denglong. Uh, just to keep a high scale uh, in circulation because you need a high scale specifically for the way we're going to be structuring this play. But so you get the Zephyr Neo out of your deck off the Dinglong's Grave effect, and then you're going to use Boxia targeting the Zephyr Neo on the field and then targeting the Scrap Goblin in Grave to special summon. So you're going to destroy the Zephyr Neo with your Boxia and it's going to bring back Scrap Goblin to be a tuner again for another Synchro Summon. Now your Zephyr Neo goes face up into your extra deck. And your Zephyr Neo triggers here because it was destroyed, allowing you to search a Yang Zing or a Zephyr card. And so from here, you can search either Zephyr Providence to search for Oracle of Zephyr and just be a bit of deck thinning, or you can just go straight for the Oracle of Zephyr itself. Now, if you had Terraforming, if you had Oracle of Zephyr in your hand already, if you had Zephyr Providence in your hand already, you could easily just search another card like Zephyr Divine Strike or another Yang Zing card or whatever. Again, those are hypotheticals that could go on for this situation, for this play, but this is still a very self-contained combo and is very easy for you to just do as the one card play and the rest of your card, the, the cards in your hand are not combo pieces at all. It's very, very, very easy. Uh, but so from here, you're going to activate this Oracle of Zephyr that you just searched and Oracle of Zephyr is going to search a Zephyrath from your deck. Now this guy is a monster. This guy is a beast. I love this card. This card is literally like a Wisdom Eye for the Zephyr archetype. Its effect is once per turn when it's in the scale, you can take a Zephyr monster from your deck, place it face up in your Pendulum extra deck, and then its scale number becomes the same as the monster that you put in your extra deck by that effect, and that's a hard once per turn that you can do it. So what it allows you to do is it allows you to fuel your extra deck for Pendulum summons very easily, resulting in quick and easy plus ones. But so what you're going to do is you're going to put that Zephyrath in your Pendulum scale, and you're going to put Zephraxi 
treasure of the Yang Zing from your from your main deck into your extra deck. It could be Zephraxi, or it could be like Ritual Beast Tamer Zephyr Umbilica, if that if that's what you want. It just needs to be one of the level three um, one of the level three uh, Zephyrus. It doesn't really matter which one it is, um, but it just needs to be a low scale and it needs to be a level three. Uh, so I can't remember if Zephyr Pilica is a low scale or not. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the Zephyr deck as its self sufficient, like a self sufficient entity. Uh, but I do know that like all the combos and stuff you can do with the deck are really cool. I'm familiar with plays, but not the deck itself. But so you put Zephyraxi face up in your Pendulum extra deck and your face up extra deck, and your Zephyrath becomes a one scale. And so from then, from there, what you're going to do is you're going to put the high scale, whatever high scale you had, into your scale alongside the Zephyrath. So now I have a one and a seven scale. So now you're all set for your Pendulum Summon. So you're going to Pendulum Summon out the Zephyr Neo that's in your extra deck and the Zephraxi that's in your extra deck to uh, to the field. And now from here, this is where we get to the point where we just start getting what we want. We're going to Synchro Summon with the Zephraxi and the Scrap Goblin into Stardust Charge Warrior. And now from here, there's going to be some chaining that happens. Stardust Charge Warrior's on Summon Effect to allow you to draw a card will be Chain Link 1. And then Oracle of Zephyr's Synchro Effect is going to be Chain Link 2. For those of you that don't know, Oracle of Zephyr's Effect is that when you Synchro or Sea Summon or Ritual Tribute or Fusion Summon using a uh, Zephyr as a material, there's different effects that you get based off what you've done. And so with the Synchro Effect is if you Synchroed with a Zephyr monster as a material like we just did, you get to look at your deck, take a monster from your deck, and put it on top of your deck. So basically, Levolve all Chain a monster to the top of your deck is essentially the effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to make... The Stardust Charge Warrior Chain Link 1, as we've already said, and then Oracle of Zephyr's Stacking Effect Chain Link 2, so that we look through our deck and we take any monster that we want, in this case, Max C. We shuffle our deck, put the Max C on top of our deck, and then as Chain Link 1, the Stardust Charge Warrior draws it to our hand. So we get to search any monster in the game to our hand off the Stardust Charge Warrior. So that's a really cool interaction. So we have Max C in our hand alongside Dryden, plus all the stuff we're about to have going forward. So now from here, we're going to overlay. Uh, we're not going to overlay right away. No, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Dryden's effect to summon the other wrap here from deck now that we have a spare space. I almost shortcutted there really, really badly. Uh, but So you're going to use Dryden detaching just whatever material you want. It could be wrap here or the Borbo. You're going to summon that second wrap here from deck. And now the reason that we're special summoning this here is because we're going to be using Oracle Zephyr's effect to draw another card from deck, and you don't want to risk drawing that wrap here. Even though the like chances of it are really low, you don't want it to happen. But so from here, you're going to overlay the Stardust Charge Warrior and the Zephyr Niu that were summoned into a Beatrice. So what we have here is that Oracle of Zephyr's effect can trigger again. And Oracle of Zephyr's effect for Xyz summoning is that when you use the Zephyr as an Xyz material for an Xyz summon, you can draw a card and discard a card. So that's what I meant by you could draw the, the, uh, the globe bulb and it's perfectly fine because at this point when you make this Beatrice, you could just draw a card and then discard the globe bulb cycling another card into your hand uh, to fix your uh, combo sequence. But assuming that you didn't draw the globe bulb, you're just going to use the Beatrice detaching a material, sending the globe bulb to graveyard, and then you're going to mill a card from the top of your deck to special the globe bulb, and you're going to synchro summon with that rat peer that we just summoned out of our deck, the second rat peer, into our Naturia Beast. So, that is the end of the combo sequence. So what we have here <laughs> is that we have Oracle of Zephyr with a Zephrath in our scale, and Zephrath is really good in the scale because of the fact that next turn it's just going to allow us to put whatever Zephyr monster from our deck that we want into our face of extra deck to go with this Zephraxi to be a pendulum summonable monster next turn. We've searched Max C or whatever hand trap that we wanted to protect our board. So you could, you, you could get Max C or you could get Ghost Ash or whatever. You have a Naturia Beast so your opponent can't activate spell cards or effects. You've got a Beatrice and so if you're playing Farfa in your deck, the Beatrice can attach a material again, send Farfa to grave and banish an opponent's monster that's trying to threaten the Naturia Beast or your board until the end of your opponent's turn and then you've also got Dryden with a material on it that can also disrupt your opponent's card and this is all being backed up by whatever hand trap you searched and then you've got this boxia that's chilling here which can bring back virtually anything that's in your graveyard for like usage like this glow up bulb you could bring back the farfa if you used it you could just float the farfa back it would kill itself take a card away from your opponent again for the for the turn like there's there's so many just little things that you get to do with this board and this was all off strictly one card this was literally a one card combo the truest sense of a one card combo was just performed one card turned into one two three four five six seven eight 
Like, it's a plus seven off of Zoo Barrage. And we didn't even do Zodiac plays in the form of what you'd conventionally think were happening. We literally just did it and used it as a really good synchro engine to be used with the Zephyrus uh, as, a, as a complimentary thing. Like I said previously in this video, I don't know if Zephyrus are going to benefit from this sort of thing. If this would be a thing that you'd want to use in your Zephyr deck. It's very extra deck intensive. It takes up 11 spots in your extra deck. But then again, I don't know if Zephyrus use too much of the extra deck or if they're just like a really just like aggressive pendulum beat deck. Not too, not too uh, very sure on that one. Like I said, I'm very well versed with like combos and plays the deck can do. Not too well versed with the deck itself in terms of how it's built and how it like wants to run. But anyway, this was just a cool combo I wanted to show you guys. Like I said, the inspiration from this came from someone that I played online a couple weeks back who was playing something like this. Uh, but he was using two and three card combos to make it every single time, and that was just really inefficient. And so, like, what you can do is you can just do this with, uh, you can just do this with one Zodiac Barrage. Um, now, like I said, it requires you to play some questionable cards in your deck. You don't have to play the Farfus, that's one less questionable card. The Bulb, it doesn't matter if you draw it as long as you have Barrage. Same thing with the Scrap Goblin. The only card that you can draw and have this combo not be live is Mare Mare. And if you play multiple Mare Mares, then that kind of alleviates that problem, but it also increases your risk of drawing it. So there's all these different little insinuating factors. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are on this combo in the comments down below. And if you have your own cool combo, a not-too-specific combo, like maybe a one, two, or three-card combo of some not-too-specific resources for some cool decks that you'd like me to take a look at and maybe even feature on this channel, then definitely send them an email form to the email address that is in the description of this video. The entire reason this video happened was because I saw this cool combo in a Zephyr deck and I was like, I think I can improve how that's being done and turns out I could and that's why we're sitting here. So I definitely like to take on the challenge of looking at these things and trying to slim down the requirements for the combos and make them a little bit better. So if there's any cool combos that you'd like to be credited for or whatever and like just seem showcased on this channel, see my input on them, then definitely send them to the email address in the description as I've already said. But otherwise, there are two other links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also has some reward tier capabilities for you. One of them gets you personal access into my Discord server, my private Discord server, where me and other people chat on a 24 7 basis whenever i have access to a computer or a phone and people ask for my input ask for other people's input it's just a big think tank and if that's something you're interested in then definitely go check out the patreon page as well as supporting the channel directly makes some projects that i've got lined up for the future happen a little bit faster than they would normally so definitely check that out if you are interested and want to help support something that you like but other than that that is it for this video again thanks for watching thanks for your time as usual and take care guys i will see you in the next video